Hello and welcome to the joint service of St. John's Lutheran Church of North Long Beach and Peace Lutheran Church of Pico Rivera. Today is the fourth Sunday after Epiphany and we're thankful to God that you're able to worship with us today. Your presence is truly a gift from God and may he bless our worship time together. I am Pastor Mike Robelch and I will be leading the service today. I'm one of the pastors at Peace Lutheran Church and the pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church. If you would like to receive copies of the bulletin and sermon prior to our service, please email us at P-E-A-C-E-L-U-T-H-C-H -E at gmail.com. Or you may send a DM on either of our Facebook pages, Peace Lutheran Church of Pico Rivera, or St. John's Lutheran Church of North Long Beach. We ask that you join in with us on the responsive readings during the course of the service. begin our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let's take a moment for silent reflection on God's word. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in, in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. lesson for today comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 18, beginning in the 15th verse. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brothers. It is to him you shall listen, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, they are right when in what they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brothers, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of life. Our second reading comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 8, beginning verse 1. Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. If anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Therefore, as to the eating of foods offered to idols, we know that an idol is no real existence and that there is no God but one. For although they may have been called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods or many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, through former association with idols, eat food as really offered to an idol, and their conscience, being weak, is defiled. Food will not commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For anyone who sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple, he will not be encouraged. If his conscience is weak to eat food offered to idols, and so, by your knowledge, this weak person is destroyed, the brother from whom Christ died. Thus, sinning against your brother and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make one of my brothers stumble. This is the word of life.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. And they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and was teaching. And they were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority, and not as one of the scribes. And immediately there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And at once his fame spread everywhere throughout all the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the gospel of the Lord. words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and redeemer. If you look into the history of warfare, you will find even ancient civilization had rules of engagement. There were places where you could fight, and there were placing, places where fighting was prohibited. There were honorable ways to fight and dishonorable ways to fight. Even today, our nation subscribes to, along with many other countries, 
to the Geneva Convention. This sets what weapons may or may not be used and what are the rules for the war. We put the Germans on trial for crimes against humanity at the end of the Second World War. In these and various other ways, we acknowledge there are rules even in war. And we might be inclined to say that there are also rules in spiritual warfare. We might be tempted to believe that the angels who rebelled against God and became demons also fight fair. In today's gospel, it shows there are no rules for demons. Our only protection against demons is the protection God provides for Jesus' sake. Jesus was in Capernaum on the Sabbath and went to the synagogue. This was pretty normal behavior for all believing Jews. Furthermore, he taught at the synagogue. Jesus had demonstrated that he had, he had a superior knowledge already at the age of 12 when he went to the temple with his parents. The synagogue ruler would often invite gifted theologians to teach in their synagogue on the Sabbath. So far, things were pretty much normal. But in today's gospel, it says that Jesus' teaching was of a higher quality than the other teachers. The people who heard him were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one who had authority and not as one of the scribes. Apparently, the scribes spent a lot of time quoting themselves or quoting their authorities. They might say something like, here's what the text says. And Rabbi X has this to say about it. But on the other hand, Rabbi Y disagrees and says this. Then there is the teaching of the Talmud, which says something else. And it seems as though the scribes talked a lot, but they never really said much. Jesus was different. He taught as though he was the authority. Jesus' teaching style was so superior that the people were astonished. This is consistent with the, one of the major themes of Mark. Jesus regularly astonished people, so they asked questions like, well, what does this mean? And who is this Jesus? In contrast to all the human beings who encountered Jesus and asked, who is this guy? There are others in the gospel, according to Mark, who knew exactly who and what Jesus was. There was in their sanctuary a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what do you have to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. The human beings in the synagogue did not know who Jesus was, but the unclean spirit, the demon who inhabited this man, knew exactly who Jesus was. Demonic possession is a strange and somewhat confusing topic, and this is because of the very nature of demons. First of all, demons are nothing more than evil angels. They were good when God created them, but they rebelled against their creator. The Bible is not clear as to the nature of their rebellion. It just informs us that they fell and are under God's curse. They will forever be God's enemies, and they are therefore our enemies. Because demons are evil angels, we cannot detect them. That does not mean that means that we can't touch them, we can't smell them, or see them, or hear them. Today's gospel demonstrates that they, but they can in, exert an influence on the physical <clears throat> world. But this influence is only a disguise, because they are not really physical beings. Because demons are spirits, the demon in today's gospel may have been regularly attending synagogue ser services along with the victim. Who knows how long this demon attended the synagogue with the man who was possessed. It might have been days, weeks, months, or even a lifetime. Who knows how many times the member of this particular synagogue gathered together, together 
and never noticed that this man had an unclean spirit. This Sabbath began, began like any other. Everyone came together and they saw their friends and neighbors and everything seemed to be fine. Most of the time, people with unclean spirits do not look like raving lunatics. Most of the time, they look quite normal, just like you and me. Demons work undercover, like a spy, if you will. The Holy Spirit inspired Paul to describe this by saying, even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. The ability of demons to act natural helps us to understand the answer to another question. Why are there so many examples of demonic possession in the Bible, but no examples in our modern culture? When we understand that demons can disguise themselves, then we can understand that this is a matter of demonic strategy. Demons have worked out that they can do more damage in our modern culture by working quietly behind the scenes. It is possible there, there are just as many demon possessions now as there ever were, but they're choosing not to act out. This tendency to lurk behind the scenes may make demons even more dangerous. At least when you see a raving lunatic, you know that person is a raving lunatic. You see the danger. After all, if Satan popped up in front of you with horns and a pitchfork and a, small, and a strong smell of sulfur, you would run and hide. It wouldn't be very tempting. On the other hand, demons tempt us with things that appear harmless. The temptation may be even fun and pleasurable. It might even be something that seems good, but we shouldn't be fooled. The powerful lure leads us to a powerful trap and slavery to sin. There's another reason for the demon in today's gospel to act immediately out. Its cover was blown. Although demons are quite capable of hiding from us, they cannot hide from their creator. When the demon heard the words of authority that came from the mouth of Jesus, it recognized the word and the authority that created the heavens and the earth. It recognized the word and the commands that command the heavenly host of angels. It recognized the word and the authority that had cast Satan and his followers, including this unclean spirit, out of heaven. We recognize that the same word and authority that came to earth and had taken on human flesh was now speaking with that same authoritative word. And immediately the unclean spirit cried out because it could not endure these authoritative words. It cried out not only in agony and fear, but in subjection and humiliation as well. The demons have no choice but to know the voice of God when they hear it. And Jesus rebuked him saying, be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsing him and crying out with a loud voice came out of him. The unclean spirit had no choice. It is no longer in control. It must submit and come out. Jesus is Lord even over the demons. Just as James, the brother of the Lord, wrote, even the demons believe and shudder. The power of Jesus over demons is pure gospel. The most powerful demon can no longer rule you. Jesus has come, and he has come to expel them and set you free. The expulsion of, today, of the demon in today's gospel was an early skirmish in the war that leads to the cross. Jesus finished this war with his death on the cross. His death overcame sin, death, and the power of the devil. It is on the cross that we hear Jesus say, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for the sin of the world. With that sacrifice, our forgiveness and our cleansing is one. Jesus does not drive us out as he did with the demon. Instead, 
He makes us his own so that we may live with him forever. Listen to the response of the crowd in the synagogue. They were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even unclean spirits and they obey him. Now, that phrase is their wonder. The ability to command unclean spirits is teaching with authority. They saw the exorcism as an extension of his teaching of his word. Jesus still comes with the authority of his teaching, even as his word shows up in churches all over the world. Even though the church is made up of people who are sinners, the Holy Spirit sanctifies us and makes us saints. Why we still struggle as saints and sinners, Jesus has given his authority to the church on earth to proclaim and give his wonderful forgiveness to all nations in his name. We have this authority because Jesus car carried the uncleanness and captivity of all nations to the cross. So the authority of Jesus Christ comes to us even today. When we hear the word of God in our ears, when we read and preach the word of God, as we feel the wet word of God in baptism, we hear the forgiving word of God in absolution. We taste the forgiveness of sin as Jesus gives us his very body and blood in the bread and wine. It is the full power and authority of the cross applied to you. We need the authority of Christ each and every day for demons still attack us. In many cases, they work undercover so that we will be tempted to believe that they're a fairy tale dream, dreamed up by ancient imaginations. Nevertheless, demons are real. They are spirits, so they never grow tired and they never rest. Their hatred knows no rules. Their desire is for you to suffer in hell along with them, so don't be fooled. Instead, look to the authority of Christ's teaching. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. It is by his teaching with authority that you are safe from attack of the evil ones and have eternal life. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us proclaim our common faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, for the richness of your creation and for all your grace to sustain what you have made, for the bounty of resources that sustains our daily lives, and for the good fruit of the earth by which we and all creatures are fed and nourished, let us give thanks to the Lord. For the commands that protect us against harm and guide us to all that is good and pleasing to the, to the God, for the gospel by which we enjoy forgiveness and life everlasting, and for courage to share this blessed word with those who do not know our Savior. Let us pray to the Lord. For the government and order in our land and for all the world, for those who lead us in this nation and for all leaders of all nations, and for the blessings of justice, the protection of life, and the promotion of virtue, let us pray to the Lord for our life together as God's people in this place, for the church throughout the world, 
for missionaries planting new churches, and for our unity and doctrine in life, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer illness of body or mind, for those who sorrow at the loss of those they love, for those near death, and especially for the Zavala, Clement, and Vega families who mourn the loss of loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. For Holy Communion of Christ's body and blood, for faith to receive this gift with joy, for the will and desire to amend our sinful lives, and for the grace to show forth in our lives the fruit of Christ's redemption, let us pray to the Lord. For thankful hearts that we may not forget the poor and those in need, for generosity that we may supply from our abundance those in want, and for the tithes and offerings we bring in gratitude for all of God's gifts, let us pray to the Lord. For our vocations and occupations, for the gift of labor and the privilege of enjoying the fruits of that labor, and for the unemployed and underemployed, let us pray to the Lord. In faithful remembrance of the saints who went before us, for grace to rejoice in the mercies the Lord showed them in their lives, and for the promised day of reunion when the dead in Christ shall be raised and we shall join them in everlasting life and light, let us give thanks to the Lord. In all things, O Lord, grant to us grace, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought, but to honor you above all and to love our neighbors as ourselves. On our own, we have nothing that will endure, but you have granted to us all things in Christ, and the life to that does not end. Hear your people for the sake of, and in the name of our Lord Jesus, who with whom, in whom, and through whom, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, along with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Join me in the Lord's Prayer. Remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his perfect peace.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. I'd like to thank our ASL interpreter, Maria Coronado, and our director of music at St. John, Rory Selden, for the music and the uh, ASL interpretation uh, during this service. Without these people, we couldn't bring the word of God to you. If you would like to join us in a physical worship service at Peace Lutheran Church, we are located at 9412 on Shade Lane in Pico Rivera. Our worship times are at 9 a.m. and 11. Our 11 a.m. service is in Spanish. If you're a late riser, uh, St. John's Lutheran Church, our worship time is at 1230. And at that service, we have ASL signing available. We're located at 6698 Orange Avenue in North Long Beach. Please help us to share the word. Hit like and subscribe and share this video so that other people may be blessed by the word of God. Thank you.